You know, every week we go to theblaze.com to find out news on the internet that you don't find in the mainstream media. Well, we don't have to go that far. Here in Canada, blazing cat fur. Dot blogspot.com is your go-to source for news that the mainstream media doesn't like. And one of the stories we found there today was about the Toronto District School Board, the largest school board in Canada that has a study guide about how to talk about communism. And the message for high school teachers in Toronto is, hey, it wasn't that bad. Joining us now to talk about this is our friend, Dr. Earl Braun, who's a visiting professor at Harvard. Welcome back up to Toronto. Thank you. Now, I mean, communism uh, uh, is so bloody in our history that it killed far more people than Nazism. You would never see a teaching guide in any school in Toronto or the free world saying, Nazism wasn't so bad, we should try and revise history. But for communism, they've got a class study guide saying it wasn't so bad. How, how can they get away with that, Professor? It's, it's appalling ignorance and pedagogical irresponsibility. Oh, I think it's more than that. I don't think it's ignorance. I think it's malice. I think the people who wrote it are sympathizers. I, I don't know the people, but certainly one would expect that uh, as educators, they would like to have students know historical truth. And we have evidence. This is not propaganda. This is not imagination. Archives have been opened up. The archives that were examined very, very carefully in uh, the former Soviet Union show that in the period that communism lasted in the Soviet Union, which was something like 70 years, over 60 million people died as a result of the repression and direct executions by the government. And That's a great point. Horrific. I mean, Stalin's starvation, the Holodomor, the, the man-made famine in the Absolutely. Ukraine alone. Uh, killed uh, more than 10 million. And, and then that's not even talking about China, where Mao's uh, mass starvation is estimated to have killed more than 50 million. In China, we have estimates. We don't know for sure, but uh, there is uh, overwhelming evidence that the numbers were very, very large. But in the former Soviet U Union, we have very good evidence. So it's actually the, the internal documents that came oh, out when the Berlin absolutely. Wall fell. Absolutely. You know, this is not uh, CIA propaganda. Yeah. Uh, this is documentation. There were scholars who went in, looked at those documents, and it's a horrific, horrific picture. And we know in Eastern Europe. And what is so sad is that here in Canada, we have millions of people who are descendants of uh, uh, those who had left uh, Eastern Europe, uh, the Soviet Union, or we have relatives. Uh, and, and their children are going to school and they are being given a completely distorted uh, picture. Of, of history. Well, let's quote, I, I want to quote some excerpts from this teaching guide. I say again, this is being used to teach high school kids in Toronto. Let me read this one here. This is a quote from the book. The Cold War's polarization of capitalism and communism influenced most Western governments and mainstream media to equate capitalism with democracy and communism by comparison with undemocratic and totalitarian political system. So, Oral, what they're trying to do here is they're saying, oh, the equation of communism with totalitarianism and dictatorship, that's just a media spin. That, that's a polarization. Well, actually, you can't, other than, I suppose, Israeli kibbutzes, the voluntary communes that didn't really work, there has been no voluntary communism in any government in the world. Uh, you the need violence the, the, to the, the, Bol it. the Bolsheviks were a minority, in fact, uh, of the population. Uh, they won a civil war at a horrific cost. Uh, the rule of the communists, marxist leninists in the Soviet Union uh, was kept in place through horrific repression. It started under Lenin, not Stalin. Lenin set up all of the mechanisms, torture, psychiatric hospitals, starvation of people designated as enemies, were all started under, under Lenin, and they were magnified under Stalin, who and was... And copied by uh, Mao and copied by Pol Pot and po copied around Eastern Europe and, and, and Asia and Africa. And it continues to exist today. So the North relevance Korea, of this is, is not just what yeah. happened in the past because we have to learn from that, but you look at North Korea. In North Korea, up to two million people have died of starvation because the regime is spending money on nuclear weapons while it's starving, starving its population. <laughs> you know what, the teaching guide has a lesson for people who think that starvation is the fall of communism. Let me read this next one. People experiencing poverty are affected by consumerism. So, Oral, what that means is if, if you're poor, it's just that uh, you want too much. Yeah, you've been conditioned to why. So those North Koreans who are starving, no, nah, it's just the capitalists who are giving them false sense of consciousness. Let me read one more quote and then last word to you. Our consumption perpetuates 
injustices like sweatshops and child labor. So as in the fact that we want stuff, it doesn't enrich us because we're all building and producing and creating wealth. We are to blame for poverty. The fact that we want things causes poverty. This is not an accident or ignorance, Oral. This is written by Marxists to try and transform our kids into morally neutral people. Again, I, I don't know these individuals, but it certainly sounds like psychobabble and sociological babble. Uh, it is, in a sense, betraying an educational mission mm. uh, where uh, our young people deserve and are entitled to be given a rigorous education where they can judge uh, what is of value, what are the differences, uh, not just some sort of facile moral equivalence. And it is uh, something that borders on, on the tragic mm. that in a country like Canada, which has offered hope to so many people around the world, which is a free democratic society, imperfect as all democracies are, there's such an obsession with criticizing what we have, attacking our system of government, our judiciary, that they are blind to anything else and therefore uh, they somehow feel uh, 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 compelled to equate any flaws in our system, yeah. imperfect as it is, with the worst kind of You know, you swap the word elsewhere. communism for Nazism, you see how evil this teacher's guide is. Oral, great to see you again.